Let's look at non-cyclic electron transport or the light dependent reactions, a specific type of the light dependent reactions in more detail. Now, so you're looking at the thylakoid membrane. You can see the stroma on either side of the membrane. So we're looking at one little isolated thylakoid. And when light strikes photosystem 2, it excites an electron and passes it to plastoquinone or PQ. That leaves kind of an electron hole in photosystem 2. It needs to recover those electrons and so it does that by splitting water producing half an O2 molecule. We do that to emphasize that that lone oxygen is not going to sit around by itself. It's going to join with another oxygen to become O2, which is oxygen gas that we breathe. It's also going to create some free electrons and two hydrogen ions, which, if you note, are in the inside of the thylakoid membrane, the thylakoid space. The electron moves from plastoquinone to the cytochrome chrome complex to plastocyanin. And that movement actually generates energy to move or pump hydrogen ions from the outside of the membrane to the inside of the membrane. And so this is active transport and it's also creating a proton motive force. The hydrogens are getting packed in there. Their concentration gradient is very steep. The difference in electrical charge, very steep, very different. And so that's going to be potential energy for something that's going to happen later. But let's keep tracking that electron. So the electron's now at plastocyanin. It's gone through what we call the electron transport chain, the PQ, the cytochrome complex, and the plastocyanin. Now it's low in energy. It gets passed to photosystem 1. And that again, with light, excites the electron and passes it to the next electron acceptor, which is ferrodoxin. Ferrodoxin will pass its electron to NADP plus reductase, which is an enzyme that is able to reduce NADP plus to NADPH. And that NADP plus will only carry one of the two hydrogens, but it does take two electrons, which is why it's normally shown as NADP plus plus a hydrogen. Then let's deal with those hydrogens. All the hydrogens packed into the thylakoid space. We call it again a proton motive force, and those protons want to get out, and they actually only have one way out hydrogens flow through what we call an ATP synthase and that energy is used to generate ATP and I've put a video um, a link to a video on blackboards so that you can watch this it's really amazing this enzyme it acts like a rotary motor you're gonna read some article an article about it as well it is an amazing amazing enzyme in the way that it works by turning by turning by rotating, by turning the force, the proton motive force, into mechanical energy in that motion. It's, it's just, it's awesome. I can't put it quite into words. And then ATP and NADPH will travel to the Calvin cycle, which is a topic for our next quiz. Um, this daily quiz is only going to talk about the light dependent reactions. But the Calvin cycle is where those energy carriers are headed. So just to summarize what you just looked at, non-cyclic electron transport creates NADPH. It does that by reducing NADP+, meaning NADP+, gets or gains electrons and becomes NADPH, the reduced form. It also creates ATP. It does that by a process called chemiosmosis or chemoosmosis. That process involves the pumping of protons and the proton motive forces then generating ATP by flowing through an ATP synthase. So it's both those things together, pumping the hydrogens in and allowing the hydrogens to flow out through an ATP synthase. That is chemiosmosis. It needs a few things for this to work. It needs water. That's our electron donor. So water is split. It needs light to provide the photon energy to split the water and to excite those electrons. And it also needs photosystems and electron carriers to act as, you know, a little 
passageway or a little route for those electrons to move along in slow, very controlled steps, releasing that energy in little bits at a time so that as much energy as possible can be captured by the plant. Cyclic electron transport is also a possibility. So you can see in gray the non-cyclic pathway and then in color here is the cyclic pathway. And so cyclic electron transport only creates ATP because the electrons are passing through photosystem 1, getting excited, passing to ferrodoxin, passing to the electron transport chain, pumping hydrogen ions across so you can still generate ATP by chemiosmosis, but then flowing back to plastocyanin and then back to the primary acceptor, well, the photosystem 1, and getting boosted to the primary acceptor of electrons again over and over and over. So you don't need photosystem 2. So in simpler organisms that only had one type of photosystem or one bundle of pigments, this was still possible. It could still generate ATP. And it doesn't need water. It doesn't consume any extra water to do this. Both cyclic and non-cyclic electron transport are going on in the membranes of terrestrial plants which when we talk about photosynthesis, we're normally talking about the chloroplast found in cells of terrestrial plants. So, quick recap. This is taking place in the thylakoid membrane. These are the light dependent reactions. They occur in the thylakoid membrane. We're breaking down water into oxygen, hydrogen ions or protons, and electrons, which will pass through the electron transport chain. We're going to reduce NADP plus into NADPH plus a hydrogen, and we're going to synthesize ATP through chemiosmosis. So that's it for the light dependent reactions. So next up will be the light independent reactions, where ATP and NADPH move to the Calvin cycle to power that process.